guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be working on some odds and ends out here in the garden. We've got some hostas to plant that were part of our latest perennial load. We've got one back in black sedum to get in the ground where one, uh, we had a drip issue where we had it planted and it was getting way too much water. We rotted it out, so I've got to replace it. And then I'm hoping to possibly plant some pansies in these four concrete containers here on the brick patio. The boxwoods have sunk a little bit, so I'm going to have to try to like dig those up a little bit raise the soil level so we can get some annuals planted. This is the most egregious one. Look at this. Like my goodness, this soil is so wet. So anyway, you can see kind of what we need to do. We need to dig around the root ball, lift these up a bit, add more soil so then we can add our pansies. And while we're working on this stuff, there's going to be two more trees being installed on the berm behind the barn. So we'll show you that in the end. I'm so excited they're back there digging one of the holes right now. First off, a few little uh, stats here. This is a brand new variety to me. It does not look awesome right now. They're looking uh, summer weary for sure being in containers and these are tight in their containers. Like if you look right here, look at this. This is roots, like kind of warping the pot a little bit. They just need to get out of their out of their containers and into the ground. We're going to groom these pretty much down to nothing too because I want the plant to immediately focus on root development rather than trying to keep these old crispy leaves alive. There are some nice leaves though down in here that look good. But these right here will grow 30 to 32 inches tall, six to six and a half feet wide. There's a good picture on the tag right here, amazing. Zone three through nine, they have lavender flowers on them. And we are gonna be planting these in a flower bed that has no hostas in it yet at all. And it's only recently become more of a shady bed. And then our back in black sedum right here. So this one grows at two feet tall, about two to two and a half feet wide, zone three through nine. Anyway, we've got one left from the bunch that we just received. We used all the rest of them up there in the Persephone garden, you know, around the hydrangeas. I used six up there and I got seven of them total. So the six that are up in the containers will come out into the landscape eventually, but this will be perfect to fill in the spot where that other one didn't thrive. And you know what, while we're up here in the shade, I think I'm gonna go ahead and groom these hostas. This is a good spot to do it, I think. So this might be a really good example of what you might find on a clearance rack this time of year. And don't shy away from them, they're totally fine. They just need to get out of their containers. So I'm just following all of the bad looking leaves down to the base of their stalk and cutting them off. And I, I'm not expecting a whole lot to be left in the end. Okay, quite a lot smaller than we started with, but I want to cut this open and show you the root ball too. This will give us an idea as to why they look the way they do. Oh my word. Look at this root ball. Oh, the poor plant. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the whole bottom of the root ball off. And a pruning saw makes quick work of this right here. Freedom. Look at this. That is like a tightly woven mat right there. Urgh. Okay, I'm gonna work on the rest of these roots just a little bit. The mount we just did by cutting off the bottom is probably sufficient, but some of these layers are so darn thick. Okay. That's gonna do it for this one. I think that looks a lot better than it did. All right, let's groom this one up. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be left with anything off this one. Okay left with like four leaves.
All the hostas are prepared and they do look better. Even though they're smaller, they look a lot better being groomed up. And this is the flower bed where I would like to put them. So right now in the earlier part of the morning, you can see there is some sunlight, which is fine, but this bed has become a sort of a neglected sort of situation. <laughs> you can tell. We've got a crab apple in here that's grown quite a lot since we moved in. It's absolutely stunning in the spring. I wanna say it's a coral burst crab apple. The flowers are pink and it, it loads up, absolutely loaded with those blooms. And then it gets the really pretty crab apples, which will start to turn color here, more yellow. I'm going to prune this up a little bit this morning. We've also got both a triple trunk and a single Jacqueline I birch in here, which is kind of <laughs> interesting that, you know, the clump was planted and then a single was planted just a few feet away. But either way, they're gonna create or have already created a beautiful canopy in here. And then all the stuff that's in here used to perform a lot better. And that's why it's just sort of dwindled out because it got more sun. We have some Royal Jubilee David Austin's in here, which I'm not gonna move today, but that is on the list. Look how beautiful. Oh. There's also some mallow in here. There's a valerian, there's iris, there's an heirloom mum that's beautiful and white when it blooms. But anyway, I think what I'm gonna do here is just trim up the branches and then I wanna pop one of the hostas. Oh, I think this is gonna get a little bit more sun in the afternoon. So I think I'm gonna tuck them in kind of right underneath this crab apple tree and I'm hoping that the canopy will sort of fluff over this stuff right here. I can't really plant that sort of like height and, and bulk in front because we have to be able to access the water faucet still, but right behind it, kind of tucked up close to it, I think will be perfect, which means I'm gonna probably dig out some of this stuff right around this space. Grab these. So let's prune the crab apple and clean up the area a little bit first, and then we'll get the hostas in. Oh, nice. This is so much better fully accessible around the hose faucet now. We could have done this way earlier in the season. I should have. much better. Hostas are in the ground and it's just not gonna look like much until next year, but you can see right here, here, and here. And I spaced them a lot closer together than uh, you would if you would expect them to get to their full size. But typically for us, we end up with plants that need to be groomed throughout the season because we are a drier climate. The leaves tend to scorch on the edges, so we groom them off. And by the end of the season, we end up with about half the plant that we started with at the beginning. So we can really afford to put them a lot closer together than if they were gonna stay more lush for the whole season. Also, I learned from a grower that hostas will never reach their potential size, like that huge massive size that you see in some of those pictures, unless they have consistent moisture. And I grew up thinking that hostas were a dry shade sort of plant, and I think they can be, but I just don't think that they will flourish as much as if they get consistent moisture and good drainage. So you gotta have those things. This is a very well draining spot, and I did pop in an extra emitter along the drip line. It was so perfect that each one of these ended up going right next to where a drip line is in this flower bed. So I just popped in an extra emitter so that they'll get a little bit more water than the rest of this bed. Hopefully that will help them be nice and big. And I just left everything else in the bed for now because at least it's something green. 
to look at, but this whole area is just gonna need an overhaul probably next season. And I kinda wanna define the flower border a little bit more. We have a dining set right here, which I love it right here. So we'll probably move that over just a little bit. And yeah, well, so we'll have some more things in here and shade loving things, which is so fun. And right behind us here, this is where we planted all the shade stuff last year and everything's looking pretty good. But this is a good example of what hostas will do in our area with our wind and our dry heat. So we have to kind of keep them groomed up. That one looks nice. Some nice looking ones in here. I think some of the best are these right here. Look at those hostas, they're gorgeous. Are they Miss America or Love Story hostas? I think they might be Love Story. I planted them last year and they're a new one for the, a new hosta that came out this year. Now let's go get the sedum planted. Isn't this sedum stunning? It is so gorgeous. And you can see where I've got one here that's still alive and it's looking good. So hopefully that one makes a recovery, but I lost this one right here. So that's the one we'll plant today. If this one doesn't make it, we can replace it, but everything else looks beautiful also. Fall in love sweetly anemones in full sun. They are gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I love these. But this will be easy because sedum do not want to be fertilized. We're just going to pop a hole in the ground and put it in there. That'll look great. Gosh, I wish all planting was that easy. Took about a minute to <laughs> get the hole in the ground. Of course, the soil was very soft because there used to be a plant there. Um, so, you know, I was kind of just drilling right into the old root ball, but that one will just do great. I'm not gonna even water it in. The root ball was nice and moist and so is the soil around it and that's plenty. So it'll just get watered the next time our drip system goes off out here. I just love how this whole space is coming together. This side in particular. We do have some fairly impressive red dahlias though. <laughs> Let me tell you, we planted a bunch of red over here. I cannot remember the name of this one, of course. Is it Virtuoso something? Scarlet? I don't know. Anyway, highly recommend any of the shorter, like compact growing dahlias that are coming out from Proven Winners. They all perform like this. They're just an amazing plant. I'm surprised by how much I like this color out here too. Okay, our next chore are the containers on the brick patio. I'm gonna go round up some potting soil, pansies, and then I might ask Aaron for his help. I think it might be easier if one of us kind of pries the plant up while another one shoves soil underneath it instead of lifting the whole plant out of the pot because they were heavy to begin with. I don't know how it's gonna go, but we'll get it figured out. We've got our soil and we've got two of the containers where the drip just ran. And I'm wondering, it's just draining so slowly. I'm wondering if while we're at it, we should try to tip these pots and like put some bricks underneath them like feet so that I don't know if they're plugged down below, but it's this one and that one, the drip just ran. In the other two, those are dry. So those will be quite a bit easier. Hi, Douglas. Oh, where are you going? Here comes Aaron with a shovel. Do you think that while we're at it, we should maybe try tipping the pots and getting some brick feet put underneath yeah, for them? Sure. Okay. That should be pretty easy though. I think so. Yeah. Do you want to go get the bricks so we do it all at the same time or do you want to work on the boxwoods and let's, then? Uh, let's just start in since, since and see. In, in hand. Okay, I kind of want to see how easy this is. I mean, they were planted this spring, so you can get closer to the root ball too, Aaron, if you'd like. Oh man, that is like soup. You know what, if you go on the other side, both of us, prime. Get it up. Okay. Well, that turned out great. So we ended up on both sides with the shovels to pry it up, and then we used three, I think, three and a half bags of soil, two underneath the root ball, and then one and a half around the top so much better and now when I put things in like pansies they can fluff and get big and like they do and they're not going to hurt the bottom of the boxwood oh I'm really happy with that so this one is next and then we'll tackle the two dry ones saving the easy ones for last
Okay, got that one done. It looks much better. Aaron is swapping the drip in this container. No wonder this box would look looks the worst out of all of them. They all did get spider mites though this year too. This is a really good example of what boxwoods look like that have had spider mites. It does not have any active ones on it now, but they get that kind of stippled looking green and yellow foliage. Usually if there's active mites, you can see webbing going on. So hopefully this one will, will recover now that it does not have mites and we will have proper drip run to it. It did not take that drip line very long to plug. We just ran that this spring. And then there's this one right here, which I did bring, I had to go get bricks. So I got another bag of soil as well. So I'll put a little bit more soil in there before we plant. Uh, but I think Aaron might be swapping the, yeah, he's gonna swap the drip in this one as well. And the drip in the first two works just fine, as you just saw. They're getting plenty of water. I've got some bricks right here, so we will tip the pot and just uh, put three under, kind of um, like that. We'll just break it into thirds and just pop these under like little feet. That way the pot will be elevated up above the soil and it can drain a little bit better. Do you think that's gonna be hard? No, <laughs> I'll, just, I'll push it from one side. You'll put a brick under, push it from the other side. Okay, hopefully we can keep them level. I'll go get a level. Or you just do by eye. By eye, you would be an excellent house builder. I would be. You should be in construction. You know what? You wouldn't know if it was off because it'd look good to the eye. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Until yeah. no windows fit in their frames yeah. <laughs> and no, no doors would open up properly. <laughs> They're all done, raised up on bricks, all leveled up. Thank you for your help. Yeah, you're welcome. We'll go check on Joe. Installing the second yeah. tree today. Yeah. Oh, so fun. I can't wait to show you the two new ones that came today. But let me show you this. I don't think that the bricks are all that noticeable. And then take into account too that this will eventually be planted and we'll bring in more mulch and things. So it'll kind of cover up the side. You know, you bring in a layer of mulch and kind of do one of these. In fact, we could just do that now and it masks the look of the brick even more. But this pot stinks. Like, I, I don't know. Hopefully the boxwood looks healthy at this point and a bunch of water did come running out. So hopefully it's not plugged now, now that it has some space. Hopefully it continues to drain and I'm glad we got after it today. We talked about doing this earlier in the season and it just kind of escaped us, getting them uh, raised up on bricks. So yeah, I can hear it dripping right now. <laughs> Poor thing. Ooh, it smells like a swamp. But here's what we're gonna do for plants. I'm just gonna go in with red pansies. That is it. I want these to be really clean and sharp looking. And the reason, and I mentioned this before, I'm going with red and I've got some dark purple pansies as well that I've been using, is that I wanted to use some colors that could transfer over into the Christmas season. I, instead of using, you know, a lot of yellows and oranges and very autumn looking colors, which I love, but I thought it might be nice to get a couple seasons out of them. And this is the spot right here that we, you know, we park near this area. We see it all the time and pansies hold up the very best out of most everything that we plant. So I thought about doing some lemon coral sedum in here and some other things, but I think because those will kind of die back in the, in the cold and not look as good, I think having just pansies would be really nice. Look at that. So this part is easy. We're just gonna get them all planted up.
love how these turned out, just the simplicity of them. Also knowing that we fixed the soil level and fixed the drainage issues going into winter, I feel like that's gonna give our plants a better chance at survival and um, surviving well. But look at that. It's just so sweet and so easy, you know? And a lot of times pansies make it right through winter and go into spring. So we'll see what these do. They're fairly exposed. You know, we get a lot of wind from this direction and all the leaf canopy will be gone. So we'll see how well they do here, but I just really like it. I like as you look across here, the red goes with the fall pillow that we have, but it'll also go with whatever Christmas decor we put out here. Some of these pansies were so leggy. Actually, a lot of them were. So we just need to give them a little bit of time and they will thicken up here pretty quick. Here's a look at this one over here, looking really pretty. And the one in full sun. Whew. I think this boxwood is the one looking the best out of all four. Okay, so now that our chores for today are done, we're gonna head back behind the barn to take a look at the two new trees that arrived today. I actually think Aaron might be working on drip underneath the last one. It may not be even um, unfurled. So they tie them up on the bottom makes all the branches go upright. And once we run the drip underneath, we cut the string and then all those branches come down and make the tree looks, well, better than it does when it's tied up. goodness oh yeah <laughs> see the very last tree that Aaron's under he's got the drip tube right now and so all the branches look wonky until we untie those but the first one they put in today is right in here and you know what I'm gonna wait just a minute uh, he's digging another hole right here and it's a little bit loud Okay, the truck just left. So now we can take a little bit of a, a quieter look at these trees here. But isn't that beautiful? Oh, so we just showed you these two. They brought these two day before yesterday. And then this one was already here since last year. So they had already dug this hole. So it was easy today. They just kind of popped that one in and then went and dug the hole for the second one over here, which let's take a walk down here. Well, let's take a closer look. This is more of a, a green Colorado as opposed to blue and I love them either way. This is more of like a like in between almost. It's like a blue green. So this one we'll get to see the branches unfurl. Are you all done Aaron? Yeah just about. I just need to unhook the wire. Oh Samantha's out here playing but I wanted to show you a close-up of the drip here. I think Aaron may have filmed that. If he did maybe we can insert that footage here. So on the back side of this berm we have a three-quarter inch supply line which all of this will be hidden under mulch eventually. And we just tap into that to run drip. Can we watch this? Yes. I kind of want to look. You found a lollipop? Oh, you made a lollipop. Very nice. I want to watch it from this side. This is so weirdly shaped from this side. I know. <laughs> a little scary. I know. Oh, here we go. Oh, it does take them a little while to further relax, too. They're not 100% relaxed the first day. Whoa, look at that. So the tree has a lean, <laughs> excellent, from this side, not from this side. This is the side that should be, well, this is facing straight out. It's gorgeous. So they can fix a lean like that? Well, I'm assuming what you'd probably do is just put like a ratchet strap on one side uh -huh. and then, you know, put something in the ground pretty hefty uh -huh. around on the other side and then just ratchet strap it tight and keep pushing it that way yeah i think so because it's loose in its hole it's not like rooted no yeah right. it's not rooted at this point yeah and they haven't staked it yet right they on purpose haven't staked any of these so i'm assuming they'll come and make any adjustments oh okay you know well that's good to know yeah can you stand next to this one aaron because this one is pretty yeah whoa that might be taller than the spruce. 
a big one. It is a big one. Yeah, <laughs> so this one's going to have to be adjusted in its hole to stand a little bit more upright. But it's so fun to see the layers start to form up over here. The one that goes in between these two, so the green Colorado and the green Austrian pine is another blue spruce, which I almost wonder, Erin, if we should bump that stake back just a tiny bit. I'm not sure. It's a big one that's coming. You think so? Uh, I think out of all the trees we get, oh, I don't know if I could say a favorite, but I just love these green Colorados. I just think the shape of them are so beautiful. So pretty. Here's one more look at the other one. Oh, it's gorgeous. And you guys, that is going to be it for today's projects. I feel like we got a lot of just little things done, which is so wonderful because it's a lot of check marks off the list. I actually made a list over this last weekend of all the things that I would, I wanted to get done well before the Dreamstream installation, some things I needed to make sure to get done, like I'm going to groom all the plants around the pond area and the pond plants and get that whole space uh, ready. And I wanted to have some other things just kind of buttoned up so that we could really just focus on that space because right after that, then we're going to start in on the cut flower garden. So we just kind of have everything lined out. And it's so exciting to see these trees come in. I mean, of all the things, I, just amazing. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.